again. You know, wasn't this the thing? We got Donald Trump as the president. You know, he's crass, he's a blowhard, he's almost always embarrassing, but at least we weren't supposed to have this constant run up to war all the time. And yet, here we are. I, I just, I just looked at the blast again. You know, you don't look at the blast. Hey YouTube, this is Praxis Prepper. So, during the opening, I mentioned it, I'm not a fan of Donald Trump. I'm not a fan of Hillary Clinton. I thought both choices during the last election were pretty rank. Uh, but here we are, and uh, whoever, whoever is in power at any time, there always are silver linings. And one of the silver linings with Donald Trump that I saw was his rhetoric about trying to step back from conflicts around the world, you know, focus more on things at home and not try to be the world's policeman, kind of a business level where you interact with people as opposed to, uh, you know, threatening and uh, throwing the, you know, American weight around. Uh, all over the world. Uh, that was the rhetoric. That's what a lot of people were excited about. People, you know, a lot of Americans are just tired of you know this kind of idea of the U.S. being the world's police officer and getting into all these wars all over the all over the planet. Uh, people were tired of that. Donald Trump said that he was going to be a change uh, in that regard, and we see where we are now. And it seems like there's going to be a change in the Trump foreign policy. For what we've seen so far, I think it kind of feels like you haven't seen anything yet. A lot of the new people coming in that are replacing a lot of the old people in his advisory staff are a lot of hardline old neocon kind of people. Uh, specifically, John Bolton was just appointed. And uh, John Bolton was a big advocate of the second Iraq war, which strangely Donald Trump said was the single biggest or stupidest mistake in the history of humanity or something like that, which makes you wonder why he would you know, appoint John Bolton, who was a big, a big proponent of this single stupidest mistake in the history of the world, whatever. But in any event, it seems like things are going to be heading in a more bellicose, more warlike direction. <laughs> and all the adversaries that we're looking at, North Korea, China, Russia, uh, are, are all nuclear powers. And, uh, and it, it gives you pause to think about where we're going. But this is where things are headed right now. And as preppers, it's good to... Uh, be aware of that and to prepare for it. Uh, and heading up to the last election, uh, back you know way before like the last couple months, the last couple months I, I pretty much called it for Trump. It seemed I was not at all surprised when Trump won at the end. But but prior to that, I presumed like ever, like most people that Hillary Clinton was going to win. You know, like I said, like uh, up until like the end of summer or midsummer, I think is when I sort of started thinking I. I was going to call it for Trump, but but prior to that, I felt that Clinton was most likely going to win, and uh, Clinton was very you know aggressive towards Russia with, with her rhetoric, and it seemed like there was a chance that we would be in a confrontation with a nuclear power. So I did a series of videos, and here's a link uh, to that to that playlist. Uh, I I feel like I put a lot of research into them uh, to to kind of get you up to up to speed about what are sort of the the threats and dangers and and how a nuclear confrontation can be survived, and it really can be survived. Nuclear war sucks, but it is not the end of the world for the vast majority of people. There is an acute period of about two weeks after bombs fly that are just absolutely dreadful and dangerous, but if you can get through that period, there is a life on the other side of that. Uh, it may not, it's certainly not going to be like the life that we have right now, but uh, there's something there, and you can at least have a choice. Specifically, here's a video right here. Uh, this is a, li uh, a link to a video that I made about uh, specifically making shelters uh, that you could use for that two-week period to survive if bombs start flying. And a lot of these shelters do not have to be expensive, and they don't necessarily need to take very much time to put together. They can be pretty rudimentary just to get you through that two-week two window to the other side, and then you can, you, know, you can have choices on the other side of that. But I think it's really worth looking at. I think a lot of people think, talk about nuclear war. It's just like, if it happens, it's just over. There's no point in trying to survive it. I disagree with that. I mean, history and looking at you know, uh, you know, the horrible things that happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki uh, are really informative that a lot of people with the proper preparations can, uh, can survive reasonably well, uh, you know, through those kind of conditions. Now, granted, if you're ground zero and you get vaporized, I'm sorry, there's not much help for you, <laughs> but the vast majority of people are going to be outside of those areas and they're going to be, you know, up shit's creek if they, they don't have some preparation. So think about it. Again, here's a video link. Check it out, and uh, 
uh, and put some thought into it because there's a lot that you can do right now that can make your life a lot better in the future. And even if you don't want to do anything right now, because I, I'll agree, Donald Trump is very unpredictable. He says one thing, he does another. He draws a red line and then he backs off from it. You know, he's all over the place. So, you know, you almost don't want to put a lot of eggs into that basket because you don't know where, where things are going. But a lot of the shelters that you can put together, they don't require an enormous amount of upfront cost or time put in. You can have these plans kind of ready to go. And if it looks like within a week, something horrible is going to happen, like, you know, cities in Russia start evacuating their populations, putting them underground, you know, something's about to go down. You can start making those kind of preparations for yourself. And to, ha to have that knowledge ahead of time, I think is really valuable, really useful, and will give you a lot of peace of mind. Because again, Nuclear war sucks, but it doesn't have to be the end of the world for the vast majority of people. The world that you'd inherit after that, you can question whether you want to live in it, but, uh, but you can at least give yourself and your family the, that choice. So that's it. Think about it. Check out the links. Check out the series. I hope you find it helpful, and I hope that you don't need any of that stuff. That's it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.